Singapore where we proclaim Christ and what wins souls. Welcome. See, we have to put our faith in God. We have to put our hope in God. And He is the only God that we, we, we can rely on. We cannot rely on man. We cannot rely on um, our, our ability. We cannot rely on our career. It is only God. On that note, it is a pleasure to introduce a woman of God who is uh, in, in touch with the Spirit of God. She is so versed with the word of God that her life has been a testament to the glory of God. Amen. And she preaches, when we when she preaches, we, we are very, 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 very attentive to her words. And we respect her a lot. Please have a welcome, Minister Offred, to give us a word of God. Yeah. 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 You know, when you need to prepare to the things that God taught, God laid on me. And I said, I was coming in the car. And you know when you you, you young are talking, your mouth not moving, but you're not talking. And I said, God, if this is what you asked me to deliver in your word, who is a heart? Give me that song. Because that song was the song that kept me up the whole night. I played the song, I played the song, I played the song over and over and over. And I know the children must have said, what's wrong with mom? Two, three o'clock in the morning, I'm there, God and I. All my life you've been faithful. And when Essie, when <laughs> it broke wow. me, brethren. Hallelujah. It broke me because it says, I've heard you. And I am with you. Amen. And that is why that's some brethren. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Now faith is the evidence of what we hope for. The assurance about what we do not see. This is what our ancient, our forefathers, were commended for in Hebrews 11, 1 to 2. Our fathers, the patriarchs, I was looking at this and I was thinking, God, our founders of faith, the Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, they all embodied this faithful lifestyle of true trust and obedience. Our God is a faithful God. Amen. Our God is a faithful God, even when we are unfaithful to him. And when we are faithless, he remains faithful because it's his nature. It is in his DNA. It is his nature and it is in his DNA. Amen. This Christian journey is certainly a walk of faith. It's impossible to walk this journey without it. We cannot live our lives without him. And let's not be deluded to think that I control my life. I'm, I'm in control of my life. It's me, it's me. Nothing. We can't control our circumstances, our situation. God is in control. We are encouraged from birth that we need to be independent and look after number one. Look out for yourself. Creating the me, myself, and I culture. It cannot happen properly without God. Our Bible reads that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Hebrews 11, 16. I guess by now you figured I'm speaking on the topic of faith. And these are my foundation. When I was a young Christian, um, and I was in church. There was this um, pastor who prophesied over my life. And he said, you, lady, with the red car. I'm like, he ain't talking to me. <laughs> I know I have a red car, but I'm thinking. Anyway, he said, yeah, you that's looking around, you. You are a faithful woman of God. And I'm like, he had not talking to me because there was no faith. <laughs> you know, but looking back now and I think, God, you know what? Yes. And while I was in the prayer this morning, the Lord brought it back to my memory. And God said, you have been faithful with what I've given to you. 
You have been faithful. Sometimes, brethren, we think that we are not faithful, but God is saying this morning, whatever I've given to you, you've been faithful Amen. with it. Amen. You've been faithful with Amen. it. And I give God thanks for that. Amen. Forgive me for becoming emotional, brethren, but this is one of my, my favorite topic because the Bible said without faith it's impossible to please God. Mm. And if you are a Christian, if you give God your life, mm. then your life is to please God. Amen. And you cannot please God without having that faith. So faith is asking. A lot of time we want stuff. But we don't ask. We assume that it will be given to us. Oh, we just briefly mention it. I would like to have that. But the Bible tells us to ask, knock, seek. Faith is activated when you open your mouth. I know sometimes we're afraid to ask because we think that what we're asking is too far-fetched. It's impossible, it's too big, or it's too small. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find it. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks will find, and the one who knocks the door will be opened. Matthew 7, 7 to 8. Ask, brethren. Ask, ask. It is not too insignificant. Ask. I used to know this lady who every time she would put her clothes on and she would say, Lord, what should I wear today? Lord, what, what am I? And I used to think, come on, this is extreme. <laughs> Seriously, extreme. But you know what, brethren? I've come to do the same thing. <laughs> I asked the Lord, I look in the mirror, I said, Lord, what shall I wear today? You know, sometimes you put your toes on and it don't feel right. The Holy Spirit is saying, mm, that's not what you should wear today, Lord. Mm -hmm. Ask, the Lord will give to us. Ask, it's like having a conversation. Faith is also belief. Believing. A lot of times we ask God for stuff. Oh, we say, can I have this, can I have this? And when it comes, we're so shocked. Oh, I didn't know it would happen. So why did you ask? <laughs> why did you open your mouth and ask? Before we can even profess to have any faith at all, we have to believe. Yes. Everyone believes in something or someone. Romans 12, 3 tells us that we all have been given a measure of faith. Faith cannot operate without believing. What's the point in asking for something if you're, you don't believe and you're not gonna get it? We can learn simply from a child. I love to use examples. My children, they keep me on my toes. I've got four children, one adult, one tween, and a couple of adults still. And this last adult, and this last adult, she would often come and ask me, Mom, can I have some money? I think to myself, well, you're working, you're asking for money. Go get that job, you're asking for money. But anyway, this child would come and she would ask. And the reason why I'm using this is because when our children come to us and ask for something, they believe they're going to get it. Yes. They've already got that belief system that says, Mom, I'm going to get it. Mom, can I have it? And then they don't stop. Mom, can I have it? Mom, can I get it? Mom, and you think to yourself, for heaven's sake, child. Uh -huh. But so it is when we go to God, we need to believe that when we ask him, he will give it to us. He will give it to us. So before she asks me, she earnestly believes in her heart that she's going to get it. Because what's the worst could happen? I could say no, but that was not what the concern. Faith is then exercise, because she's exercising her faith in believing that she's going to get it. 
This is exactly what we do with God. We ask, God, can you give me a job? Can I have a house? Can I have that car, Lord? Lord, can I, can you bless me with a husband? Mm -hmm. Can you bless me with a wife? Mm -hmm. And then, Lord, up there, bless me with all of that. Can I have some children as well, Lord? Mm -hmm. We get it. We believe. Mm -hmm. We get it. We believe at the time of asking that we will get it. Mark 11, 24 tells us that, Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have it, that you have received it, and it is yours. So whatever you ask for in prayer, remember there's a condition. So we can ask for stuff, but there's another element to it. Faith is expecting. When we, when we ask, believing for something, we need to have an expectant attitude. When we ask God for something, we need to have an expectant attitude. There's no point in asking God for something and then we sit down and we think, maybe, maybe not. If, when, how, we have to have that expectancy to receive it. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. How many times have we prayed by faith to God for something and when it's manifested, we are surprised. Mm -hmm. So just like an expectant mother who prepares for her newborn, we must prepare for what we're about to receive. Mm -hmm. And this takes me to Matthew 25 with the five virgins and the five foolish virgins. How can you not prepare? God is about to bless you. God is about to bless you. Amen. God is about to open up your basket. Mm -hmm. Clear out your basket. Clear out. Make clear. Make space. Right. Because when God gives it to you, you can't even contain it. Mm -hmm. You can't contain. You can't hold it. Because sometimes we think that when God gives us this thing, this, this little small, this little, oops. Mm -hmm. No, God is bigger than that. Amen. Mm -hmm. God is bigger than that. He gives us far more, exceedingly above and beyond. Because he doesn't just give you what you need at this very time. He sees the beginning from the end. Amen. So he knows, he knows that if he gives you this little bit right here, it's not going to be enough. He has to give you to sustain you. He has to. So he can't just give you this little bit. He gives it to you so it's sustaining. Then when we ask God for something, <clears throat> here comes the patience or the impatience. I waited so long. <laughs> <laughs> what is it happening? Then we begin to doubt. Is it happening? And then when we don't see it, we help God. Ah! <laughs> help all God. God don't need no help. God don't need help. God can do God all by himself. Yes. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we become impatient because we are waiting and we are waiting. Here, Pastor, talk about the testimony. 30 years the man waited. 30 years. And then it is finally manifested. He gave it in the, in the good time. Yes. Yeah. Except he gives it to you when you need it. When it's most appropriate, then he gives it to you. Yeah. A lot of time, God can wait on some of us because we're not ready. I know. Yeah. You know what I call this? I call this the poking time. How <laughs> <laughs> can he eat raw meat? How can he eat uncooked food? No. You can't eat uncooked no. food. God know you ain't ready. Yes. God know you ain't ready. And you better be okay with that. That's right. You better be okay with that. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, God has been dealing with me, you know. Regina, I don't know, but I, I, I want a house. I ask God, God, can I have a house? Lord, give me a house. I've seen many shades of houses. Uh, <laughs> I said, Lord, I thank you for that house. <laughs> I 
Lord had said nothing. And so it is. 
In verse 10, he says, Truly, I, I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such faith. If you have faith, if, um, up here, such faith, will this be you or will this be me? I'll tell you another story now. My girls, they know. They have to pray for stuff. I don't care if they don't believe in Jesus. I don't care if they don't believe in the God that I serve. They have to pray for stuff. Mm -hmm. The Bible said, train up the children. Mm -hmm. They know they don't just go and pick it off the tree or push my pocket or no, they have to pray. From my girls were young, they're praying. And the girls, they all wanted an Xbox. Mm -hmm. I can't afford an Xbox. Mm -hmm. I'm a mother of three at a time. I don't have money. I'm not working like that to get Xbox. So I said to the girls, you know what? If you pray, the Lord will answer your prayer. And they go, really, mom? And I said, let's this it out by now. That's right. Let's see. And the girls, every day, they would get up, Lord, please, Lord, get up. <laughs> Lord, tell me what's an Xbox. <laughs> they, they go, yeah, this, this one, go and check. This one said, so we go and check. Is the Xbox <laughs> This one, go and check. I said, here. Something come in the post. Is it the Xbox? <laughs> the girls would pray, and they would pray. And then finally, finally, one day, I said, Lord, you know, see how earnest they're praying for this Xbox. Lord, do my them no Lord, honor them no, because I tell them about you. So let's show it now. Let's express it. And then one day when the door ring, I said to Abigail, Abigail, go open the door. There's a package. This one run down the stairs, this one run down, and everybody said at the door, and then I said, Abigail, you can open it. Yeah, you can open it. And then, you see the face, and then, and when the Xbox came, oh my goodness. Mm. Wow. Mm. These girls squeal. Mm. And you know that Xbox was broken? Mm. No? You know children mash up toys quickly. Yeah. That Xbox was well taken care of. Oh. Why? Because they believed that they prayed, and they got that Xbox. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so it is when we pray, by faith. Mm -hmm. They spoke it and it happened. They said, Lord, please that mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Faith is seen. There are so many instances in the Bible that can attest about faith in action. The Shunammite woman. There's oil in the house. We call this, there's oil in the house. Mm -hmm. When, when the, the prophet says to her, go and, go and bring a jar, bring it from your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Go ask so over 22 and 23 and 24. Tell them to send their jars. And there it is. <clears throat> Faith in action. Then we've, we've been told about this paralyzed man who's been paralyzed for 48 years. No, this is a personal story for me. This is a personal story for me. I remember my husband and I share this story. <clears throat> Before um, Christopher, no, 38 years, 38 years, not 48, 38 years. When Christopher turned 38, this was the hallmark, this was a scripture for us. Because we felt that 38 years, you're at that pool, you don't move. You say you move, but you actually don't move. You move in your mind, but you don't move physically. Mm -hmm. And then you have the cheek to say, but nobody not come and put me in the pool. Excuse me. Wait. Yeah. Monster. Huh? Nobody come and put you in the pool. You ever call anybody and say, Elder, put me in the pool, please? How you can drag me over here, sir? Open your mouth. Huh? You sit down and you expect. And I look at my husband, and my husband look at me and we say, no more. no more. We said no more. No more. We're dragging each other going into that pool. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that broke a cycle. Then we have the woman with the issue of blood. In Mark 5, 3, 5, 34. Mm -hmm. That woman's faith, she was so timid, she was so afraid. Can you imagine? You're in a crowd. 
you're in a crowd and you feel somebody touch you. And, and you think, wait, what was that? Somebody, wait. And then she's so frightened that she was going to be outed. She, she was like, and the Lord said, by your faith. Mm -hmm. Because you have exercised your faith. Sometimes we have to be bold. Yes. We can't be frightened. We can't be afraid. Mm -hmm. And then it look, it look sometimes, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes it looks so silly. Huh? How, how does that work? Sometimes we, I think we're too intellectual, you know, I believe it's because we're too intellectual. We don't think about the simple things. Yes. Huh? Of course it could just be a healing. Yeah. Well, we have to deep it. Mm. Stop deep it. Mm -hmm. My daughter would say, stop deep it, mom. Don't deep it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The lady lifted her faith. And she was healed. Then we had the feeding of the 5,000 in Matthew 14, 13 to 21. Again. How oh, on earth, you tell me, God wants our my maths is not the same. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to lie, we're not too bad with the maths. <laughs> I'm not too bad when it comes to maths. I'm not university level maths, but I know a thing or two. Uh -huh. So how God gets five fish and two loaves to feed? How that works? <laughs> <laughs> Don't explain to me <laughs> how that works. Don't you see? That's faith in action. Huh? Don't you see? That's faith in action. It can be seen. It can be proven. Then we've got the blind man in John 9. This blind man, every time I think about it, I laugh. Listen. Your family must sin. Your mother and father sin. They've committed a sin. That's why you're blind. And the Lord said, no. <laughs> Not so. It's for my glory. I did that. It's only because I did that. So sometimes some situations in our life, we just say to God, thank you. Thank you, God. Because we don't know. We genuinely don't know. And so we give God thanks. We walk by sight and not by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. So yeah, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Faith is prayer. This one is my ultimate favorite and my preference. I love this. Nothing. And when I said nothing, brethren, and there are some things that can be so sweet, but nothing, absolutely nothing, beats prayer. Prayer underpins everything. The Bible said we should pray without ceasing. Luke 18, 1 to 8. Be like the persistent widow. This widow, she never stop, never stop, never stop, never stop. This is all your prayer should be. Don't stop praying. You know, I was listening to... She always cracks me up, you know. Prophetess cracks me up. <laughs> she does. I can always have a good laugh. Because that's what we do. We laugh with each other. We enjoy the word and we laugh. Right. Prophetess. <laughs> <laughs> she says, stop all. Don't stop all. <laughs> Don't stop. Keep going. Mm. Because what you do when you keep going, you break down the reserve. Yes. Amen. You break down the reserve. You keep going, you keep going, yes. you break down the reserve. Mm. Prayer is a weapon. Yes. Prayer is a fuel. Mm. Prayer is a target. Mm. I love prayer. Mm. There was a time in my life when I used to fight physically. No man, no woman, no boy, no girl beat me. Mm -hmm. I have to win. I have to win. Tear up and all and stretch up and all, but I have to win. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, you don't have to fight that way anymore, no Audrey. Amen. Fight on here. Hallelujah. Fight on your knees. Amen. You want to fight? You want, sister, pray. Mm -hmm. 
We have to cultivate a life of persistent prayer. We could ask, we could believe, we could speak it, and we even witness it, but it's nothing without prayer. Mm -hmm. We need to pray so we can access God's supernatural power, mm -hmm. which will allow us to do more exceedingly and above our natural capabilities. Mm -hmm. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, Philippians 4.13. When Elijah prayed about the falling, the falling and the non-falling of the rain, his prayer was honored, James 5, 17 to 18. He prayed that the rain would stop. And the same one went back and said, Lord, let the rain go. Yeah. Can you imagine having such faith? Mm -hmm. Having such faith mm -hmm. that you can say, rain, stop. <laughs> Don't fall today. I used to know a man, you know. I still do know that man. When that man was in his heyday, that man commanded the rain to stop. He believed that he needed to marry this girl, and he planned a wedding. This is a true story. He planned a wedding, everything. The girl was only just to turn up. And when the things was out, and the rain looked like it was going to pass, I said, no, God! Stop the rain! And the rain stopped. Didn't get to marry the girl, though. No. Didn't marry the girl. But for me, I looked at that and I think, oh, you can stop the rain. <laughs> <laughs> now that encouraged my brethren. Because if a mere man that I know put his hand up and said, stop the rain! And the rain stopped. What say about you and I? What say about you and I? Huh? Some situations in our life we need to say, God, come on, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Like I have a situation right now. And I'm saying to God, enough is just enough. You're not taking my child, devil. Enough is enough. Me, not getting up off my knee. Mm -hmm. Enough is enough. Don't play no dally to the devil. Mm -hmm. Listen. And sometimes we have to be forceful in prayer. Forceful in prayer. Because let me tell you something. These demonic forces these days, they're not about you. But they're bare fists. They stretch your eye to eye. <laughs> mm -hmm. They step up and stroke their chest. <laughs> and then the like, boom, you're supposed to, you're supposed to. No chance. No demon in hell. The only time my life is taken is when God says, Oh, thank you, Amen. 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 That used to be my fear. My fear used to be, Oh, God, I'm going to die. Mm. Die what? If I die, I die in Christ. Amen. Amen. Listen, let me tell you something. God is my ultimate source. Amen. God is my ultimate Jesus. source. Amen. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avail much. James 5, 16. You want to see God's word manifested in your life? Pray. You want to have breakthroughs in your life? Pray. You want to get through some stubborn and tricky situation in your life? Pray. I cannot emphasize prayer enough. Some would say, um, I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to pray. Jesus is a prayer. Lord, help me is a prayer. Jesus, be with me is a prayer. But then I do want better. The Lord has given us his prayer. He's given us the Lord's prayer. I remember when we used to be in church, we used to recite these. These used to be our, we call them our golden texts. Yes. We call them our scripture, our goal to script. Bring back the golden text to the children. Let them recite scripture. i tell you what, you will never depart from it because it's embedded in there. It is in there. You don't leave it, don't leave it. So, the prayer at the end of James 
5, 13, 16 admonishes us to pray. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. So, let us now open our mouth, ask, seek, knock, believe with all our heart, with boldness, and witness God's faith in action as we exercise our level of faith in prayer and supplication to our Heavenly Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord.